This video is going to serve as an introduction to how you may go about lighting a car. One of the biggest challenges you face is that cars are quite large and that requires an awful lot of light. On top of that, the rigging that's actually necessary to position a light effectively is huge and the crew and everything else that goes behind it means it's not going to be practical for most people to test this out at full scale. By using a miniature, you're going to be able to practice all of the principles of lighting a car but without those challenges of having to have very large lighting fixtures and lots of grip. Not to mention the car itself and the space to do all of that. Something I see a lot of people doing the first time they get to light a car is placing a small-ish LED panel basically from the same direction as the camera. It's incredibly rare that this is going to be the correct look for lighting a vehicle. The source is going to be small, it's going to show up all the imperfections, and it's not going to give you that smooth, sumptuous, glossy look that you're probably aiming for. And indeed, we can see here when I've got one of those small little Lumamuse panels and I'm moving it around the vehicle and it's flat onto the car from the same direction as the camera, it doesn't look good. And at this scale, that light is probably much bigger relative to the vehicle than the lighting source that you're going to be able to use if you've just got a small LED panel in real life. It would just not scale the same. So it's probably going to be even worse than that. In this scenario, the equipment I'm using is fairly stripped down. We've got a Manfrotto Lycos panel, a Lastolite Halo for diffusion, and then on top of that, I've got a couple of little bits of black card and white card, and we're gonna be using those to control our reflections by either taking them out or adding some in. Okay, so let's dive right in. The first big issue is that if I just have the lights on in my room with a car on this gray paper backdrop, I'm gonna have a very shallow depth of field. I'm on a 35 millimeter lens. If you look at this, it really does look like a model car. So the first thing we've got to do is bring in some lighting. Where are we going to bring in that lighting from? Well, from the top. As with any area of lighting, this is highly subjective, but a very good first step if you're trying to light a car is to create a big soft source above it. And when you see people working at full scale, you will have probably noticed those enormous soft boxes that are rigged above the vehicles. So by doing this now, I have a lot more light on that miniature car and I'm able to stop down the lens instantly this changes how the scene looks. Now it's more focused on the car and on top of all of that, because I've got more light to play with, I'm stopping down the lens and that means that I'm getting a deeper depth of field. So now everything looks a little bit sharper, a little bit more realistic. From here, we can start to really finesse things. So I mentioned trying to cut a little bit of light off the background. You might want more light on the background. It depends what you're trying to do. Even if you just have an iPhone, you could put that behind, pointing at the background to create a little bit of a vignette halo kind of around the car. Now, one of the easiest things you can do, even on a full scale car, is cut light out. When you're working on this scale, I recommend some black card. You can just slot that in. And by moving that card close to the car, you can see it takes all of the bounce light, which was hitting the surface away, and creates a little bit more definition. Now, this is a matter of taste, but it really starts to shape things off. And you can see by just moving the black around, moving it in a little bit, we're getting a completely different vibe in the reflections and in the shaping of the car. Now on the other side of things, you can use a bit of white card to add a bit of bounce back in. This is really cool if you want to highlight a certain area or give one of the lines of the car a little bit more definition. Now this could ultimately be an active stroke if you wanted to. I've tried to keep things simple here just with one light, maybe something for the background and either negative or bounce. But when you really get into this, you can be doing those extra active strokes in places just to really give everything the exact amount of definition you want. And people get incredibly precise when they're lighting cars. Now with all of these strokes in place, it's looking a lot better. Everything's tighter, everything's got more shape to it, and it's actually beginning to be a convincing image. Now we could go further, we could improve this, but for now, that's all I wanted to look at. We can try different angles, and indeed I've turned it round. This is very easy to do with a model car, you can just keep moving it until you get it in the right place. It's easier to move the car in this scenario than it is to move the camera, so I would just be keeping the camera in one position and moving it around. Moving around, getting all those different angles, you're gonna notice some things work, some things don't. Now obviously, looking at how people have shot cars for adverts is gonna be really useful for you here, so you can see what kind of angles they tend to go for and what kind of height the camera's at, really start analyzing that so you can see what they get out of certain shapes of car body and where they're putting the camera to get that look. I'm gonna be making another video on this where we go into a little bit more detail, but something to try before you get to that for next time is actually adding a little bit of color in now. So in this case, I've added some red behind the car 
And bearing in mind, we had a gray background to start with. We've got that red behind the car now. We've got the yellow of the car. So it's really popping out. That red could be evocative of like car tail lights, that kind of thing. So it's something that's quite motivated in that scenario. Now there's something to watch out for when you're doing this. And one of the reasons that I'm using quite a thick diffusion here is LED lights will often have the bare bulbs visible in reflections. And that can be quite distracting depending on what kind of vibe you're going for. But when you're starting out, trying to get a homogenous single light source is probably best and you're not getting distracted by all those little lights reflecting in the surface of the vehicle because that can take away your focus from what the form of the car is actually meant to be and that's what you're trying to show off just here. Now in a few of these last shots, I have actually done active strokes with the little Lumimuse panels, bouncing them into some white card on either side to help to shape up the front of the car and add some reflections back in. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'm gonna be doing some more work with miniatures. This was really just an introduction to get people's creative juices flowing and then we can start to explore it in more detail in the future. At Still Moving, we're in a position where we're working on automotive projects. We do actually have to do this on a big scale as well as uh, obviously showing you how we're doing it here on a small scale. In the future, we're gonna be breaking down automotive adverts that we've worked on with some really big car manufacturers so that you can see how we take the principles that we've got here at a small scale and take them up to a full on commercial shoot. If you have any questions or if there's anything that you would like to see in particular, drop it down below because you never know that could be the subject of our next video.